Welcome back to Weapon Wars, a video series where I take my military and weapon experience and combine it with my video game passion so we can see how video game companies' virtual weapons stack up against their real life counterparts. This episode was voted by you, the people. It ended up being a very close vote, but in the end, the Browning Automatic Rifle pulled it out, followed closely by the Mauser C96. But don't worry, if you voted for the Mauser, it's going to be featured in an episode very soon. But today is the Browning's turn, so let's get started. Now the Browning has been featured in video games with a couple of different variants. So today we're going to be looking at the Browning Model 1918 Alpha 2 variant. The original BAR, the Model 1918, is also very prominent in video games, so it may get its own individual video in the future. Now the reason I chose to go with the Model 1918 Alpha 2 instead of the original variant is because I wanted the chance to compare a couple different games. The games we're looking at today are Heroes and Generals, Rising Storm, and World War II Online, Battleground Europe. All three very deserving games, but also very different games as well. But before we talk more about them, let's go ahead and examine the history of the BAR. Before we can examine the history of the BAR in the Alpha 2 version, we first have to look at the original one and how it came about. In the early days of 1917, it became more and more evident that neutrality was going to be hard to maintain and the US would eventually have to join the war in Europe. With the World War mostly being a stalemate in Europe, the American forces were going to be considered to be an assault force. But assaulting no man's land was nearly impossible. With deadly Vickers machine guns on one side and just as deadly Maxim machine guns on the other, there needed to be a weapon where the troops could carry with them and provide fire on the move. The American Expeditionary Force needed their own machine gun they could take with them on the move, their own light machine gun. In came the concept of walking fire and John Moses Browning. Now walking fire is it's exactly what it sounds like. It's walking while firing. Uh, basically just suppressing the enemy so they keep their heads down while you assault so they can't shoot back, hopefully. It didn't end up working in reality. Now just because the concept of walking fire didn't work does not mean the Model 1918 was not a good weapon. In fact, John Browning was basically a weapon savant. Unless you're like a real gun nut, most people don't fully appreciate John Browning's contribution to the firearms community, mainly due to many of his designs being produced under other manufacturers' names. A lot of his designs would appear under the American company Winchester, but also some of his designs made it overseas to companies like Fabrique Nationale, where they produced his FN Model 1910 pistol. Ironically, the same pistol that would be used in the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, sparking the need for a weapon like the Model 1918. 1938, 10 years after the passing of John Browning, work in redesign of the BAR Model 1918 had begun. This work would give us the Model 1918 Alpha 1, and more importantly, the Alpha 2. The redesign of the Model 1918 wasn't due to any major fault with the original weapon. No, it was mostly done to make the Model 1918 suit its new role and designation as a squad automatic weapon. Some of the things that came to the redesigned Alpha 2 were things like a skid style bipod mounted to the front of the muzzle. Also mounted on the front of the muzzle was a flash suppressor. A shoulder plate was added to the buttstock. Magazine guides were added near the trigger well. They also changed the sights on the Model 1918 Alpha 2. Originally, the Model 1918 had infield sights, but with the Alpha 2, they switched to the 1903 Springfield sight. But the biggest change to come to the Model 1918 Alpha 2 had to be the firing mechanism. The original Model 1918 had three selector modes, full auto, single fire, and safety. With the Alpha 2, you got two full auto modes and a safety, one being a fast full auto and one being a slow. The slow fire was partly accomplished by adding a hydraulic actuator in the buttstock and all these changes came at a price, mainly weight, almost 5 pounds of it, so the Alpha 2's designers eventually did add a carrying handle to the weapon. Early on, the Model 1918 Alpha 2 variant was created by converting old Model 1918s and Model 1918 Alpha 1s into the new Alpha 2. But in 1941, the US once again was drug into a world war, and once again the Browning Automatic Rifle was called upon. Production of new Model 1918 Alpha 2s begun, and in total, more than 100,000 were built. In the end, the Model 1918 Alpha 2 ended up serving from conception in 1938 until the early 1970s during Vietnam, until it was completely phased out. Now that we have a brief understanding of what the Model 1918 Alpha 2 is all about, let's see how well these video games did to recreate them. Starting with how they visually represented them. Now all three games visual representation of the Model 1918 Alpha 2 is respectable enough where you can tell what it's supposed to be. But there is one clear standout that is less visually appealing than the others. And that's definitely going to be World War II Online Battleground Europe. Now World War II Online Battleground Europe is a game I absolutely love. But it was made in 2001, and it does so many incredible things to accurately represent World War II or give you the feeling of a real world war, but visuals is definitely not its strong suit. 
And even though the BAR is a fairly new weapon added to World War II Online, coming to the service in 2012, the weapon was still designed on this ancient game engine that makes textures look dull and boring and models sometimes pretty janky. World War II Online is definitely the least visually appealing game I've compared in this series. So with that said, I'm going to have to give it a 1.5 out of 5. But man, this game still has a lot going for it, even though it looks bad. Now Heroes and Generals and Rising Storm are kind of a toss up for me, but I'll go ahead and start with Heroes and Generals. The model for Heroes and Generals Alpha 2 looks amazing, they, they pretty much threw every unique feature onto the weapon, even though a lot of them were removed by soldiers in the field, but I still like the attention to the detail they showed here. And of course this is a free to play game, so you're not going to get the visual quality of something like a Battlefield 1 where they have the frost engine, but you still get a pretty good product. But the only thing I would nitpick, and this will lead me into Rising Storm, is that the weathering effects on the weapon look like they were painted on. It doesn't look natural to the weapon. If you look around the carrying handle and where the barrel meets the receiver, it's most noticeable. Kind of splotchy. This is the thing with the Rising Storm. Their visuals are just as good, but the weathering effects on the weapon look a lot more natural and realistic. And in just like Heroes and Generals, their attention to detail is pretty significant. You can obviously see the magazine guys on the side of the weapon here. And some of the features you see missing from this Alpha 2 were commonly removed by soldiers in the field. So with all that said, I'm going to have to give Heroes and Generals a 3 out of 5, and Rising Storm a 3.5 out of 5. Very close visually for me. Now let's go ahead and look at accuracy. All three games are very similar as far as it goes with accuracy, but out of the three, I would say probably Rising Storm is the most accurate weapon. If you fire your weapon in slow full auto, in bursts of 1-2 to two bullets, you can easily hit targets at 500-600 to 600 meters on a consistent basis. With World War II Online and Heroes and Generals, this is also possible. But both games, if you want to hit targets at 500 to 600 meters, you need to be in the prone position. And with World War II Online, you need to have your bipod out. And unfortunately, the Heroes and Generals bipod is completely for show. So for Rising Storm, I would give the BAR Alpha 2 variant a 3 out of 5. I would give World War II Online's BAR 2.5 out of 5. And finally, I would give Heroes and Generals Alpha 2 2.5 out of 5. Now access wise for this weapon, some of these games are pretty depressing. A lot of you watched me try to get to the BAR and Heroes and Generals, and man that was a struggle. It is a grind, it is painful, and I wanted to hurt myself. Eventually I did end up spending a little bit of money to speed up the process, and it still was a little bit rough. Luckily Heroes and Generals is a fun game to play in general, so I wasn't bored while doing it, but man that took some time. But there's no question in my mind. Heroes and Generals is a 1 as far as access goes to any of their later weapons, including the BAR. World War II Online is also not quite user friendly when it comes to the BAR. This is due to the fact that the BAR is on the American side for World War II Online, and the American faction does not come into account in World War II Online until later in the campaign. Once the Americans do hit the Western Front, you get a fairly decent amount of them, probably around a 3 out of 5 amount. But because you don't have access to the Americans from the get-go, and that you have to wait until later in the campaign, I'm gonna have to say it's a 2 out of 5 as far as access goes. As far as Rising Storm goes though, it's very reasonable. And this is one thing I messed up with Red Orchestra in the DP28 video that I did previously, linked in the card above or in the description below. I was kind of rough on Red Orchestra about its access level, but really looking back, it's fairly reasonable and historically accurate as far as that goes too. But I have to say the access level to the BAR in Rising Storm is probably a little bit above average at a 3 out of 5. Now on to the most subjective category, sound. Now two of these games have very unique sounds, not exactly for the good kind of reasons, but maybe. Uh, but Rising Storm has a very mild, decent, not bad, not great, just straight down the middle, you know, barely accurate to what the real world weapon sounds like, but not a lot of impact kind of sound for its weapon. Listen here. Me personally, I think it's a very meh kind of sound. It's like I said, it's not, it doesn't impact you like a real world weapon would. It doesn't have that oomph. So for that, and because I feel like it's right down the middle, I'm going to give a right down the middle score of two and a half out of five. Now on to the two games with the very unique sound. And let's start with the more cool sounding one, Heroes and Generals. Now I'm not saying this is historically accurate, but the sound in Heroes and Generals, it sounds good. It sounds impactful. It sounds like it should be coming out of a weapon. It's something you would like to hear in a video game and it lets you know you're firing a damn gun.
But one thing that throws me off on the BAR and Heroes and Generals as far as sound goes is the ka-chunk sound, the metal clinking noise. It's just so weird. It's cool, I like it, but it's so weird and so seemingly out of place. But feel cool? I don't, I don't know. Like I said, it's a very subjective category. As far as just pure sound goes in video games, I think Heroes in General does a pretty good job of sound design for the most part. And I think the BAR falls in line with that. So I'm going to give the sound in Heroes in General, as far as the BAR goes, a 3.5 out of 5. Now on to the weirdo of the group. One of my favorite games, World War II Online. And why I call it the weirdo of the group is because the weapon sounds like the real world weapon. And it has a pretty impactful sound for the most part. But the issue is the game is so old, you can basically hear the audio loop of the sound whenever you fire just a single shot. Listen here. And like I said, this weapon sounds like the real world weapon. And I think that's because they just took an audio recording of the BAR or a weapon similar to it and basically just looped it. It sounds like you can hear background noise. Listen again. <laughs> it's so weird. I don't know where to rate it because like I said, to me, it sounds a lot like the real world weapon. And as always, I linked in the description below a video showing how the real world BAR sounds. But at the same time, I don't think I can forgive how old the looping sound thing is. So I'm going to definitely have to go below average and give it a 2 out of 5. That may be a little bit generous. Now as far as historical accuracy goes, all three games did an actually pretty decent job in my opinion. Visually, all three games represent the BAR very well, although one chose to not strip down the BAR like it was common, but also those components that they show in Heroes and Generals, it had all the things they show. As far as accuracy goes, all three games are very comparable, all around 500 to 600 meters, they're right in the middle-ish area of the effective range of the BAR. Access, I'm not going to ding games as much anymore about access. Unless it's like something like Battlefield 1 where they're giving weapons to everybody and people who've never touched that weapon before. So they all seem to be okay there. Sound is where I will draw the line though because Heroes and Generals made a clear effort to change the sound. They added that ka-chunk sound in there. Which is really cool once again for just a game purpose. But I searched far and wide and could not find a single recording of a BAR that had such a prominent sound like that. So for World War II Online, even though it is a crazy loop, I think it's probably the closest sounding one to a BAR, even though it may not be as impactful. And Rising Storm is fairly close as well. As far as bonus points though, I'm only going to give Rising Storm an extra point. Because as always, Tripwire went above and beyond with the historical accuracy. The 1903 Springfield flip sight, it flips up just like it really does. And the the most impressive thing to me was the only game that modeled in both full automatic fire modes. You have a full auto and a slow full auto in Rising Storm. That is super impressive to me. So for historical accuracy, World War II Online ends up with a 4 out of 5, Heroes and Generals ends up with a 3 out of 5, and Rising Storm ends up with a perfect score of 5 out of 5. Now I want to take a moment while my computer hamsters calculate that final score here to thank you guys once again for inspiring me and helping me and supporting this series. I absolutely love doing this. It's a lot of fun to me. And you guys are giving me so many great ideas. I know when I'm cranking out these videos, I don't reply uh, to as many of your comments, but I am reading all of them. I do appreciate all of y'all for leaving comments, liking the videos, watching the videos, and everything else. If this is your first time watching one of these videos, please consider subscribing. We do these videos every now and then. I like to hang out with the community and do some live streams. Uh, that way I can interact with you guys on a more direct basis. And yeah, that's, yeah, that's the basic gist of it. Uh, but let's see what our final scores are here. World War II ends up with a total score of 12 out of 25. Rising Storm finishes with 17 out of 25. And finally, Heroes and Generals finishes with 13 out of 25. Thank you once again for watching this series. I hope you enjoyed it. The next one will be the Mauser C96 video a lot of you wanted. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you go ahead and do that so you can see when that video posts. And please let me know what you guys think about this video in the comments below. And as always, if you have any ideas how I can improve, I've tried to implement something new every video. 
Uh, so hopefully you guys see that. Uh, I love hearing your guys' feedback, so let me know as always. And until next time, have a great one.